Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brian Pedovich here. We've got to talk about Tropical Depression 9. Even though the weather is gorgeous in the Carolinas today, through the weekend, early next week, obviously a lot of eyes are on Tropical Depression 9 and there's a lot of hype out there and not enough awareness. And that's what I always tell people. Weather hype is when you're raising alarm without awareness. We need to be aware for a tropical system in the Southeast, but we don't need to be scaring the living you know what out of people because we have a lot of uncertainty. The preciseness of what people are pitching you is just not there. Let me show you the overall view. We've got a lot going on in the tropics. TD number nine is the most immediate threat to the continental United States. Hurricane Fiona, huge threat for Canada. Boy, please batten down the hatches up there. It is gonna be brutal, that system, and three other systems that will not impact the continental United States. So we're not really watching any of those. The system that we're most concerned about right now is Tropical Depression 9. By the time I'm recording this and you see this, it might already be Tropical Storm Ian, but it does not look very healthy tonight. There's a view of it. There it is in relation to the United States. It's been going through a lot of shear, but it's about to go into some really warm water temperatures. In fact, if we look at the water temperatures here, this is the abnormally hot part of the Atlantic. Uh, North Atlantic's really hot where Fiona is, but most of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico is above to well above. I mean, we have really warm water down there, and in some cases, mid up radies. It's just not warm water. It's super deep warm water. So let me show you the latest advisory. A new one will be coming out here at 11 o'clock. Winds were 35 miles per hour. Again, could become a tropical depression over, or a tropical storm overnight. It would be called Ian. As it moves northwest, conditions will improve for strengthening as it makes the turn. Uh, and again, where that turn happens is still uncertain. Is it more towards uh, these areas over towards the Yucatan Channel in there. In that case, it would stay stronger. If it's more over here, that means it's gonna have more interaction with Cuba and maybe weaker. So there's a lot of uncertainty just in this churn alone. And remember the cone, when you look at the cone, anybody who draws the line does it wrong. That's not what this is. The center could be anywhere in there. So it could be here and you could have a hurricane of this strength. It could be here and the hurricane be, could be like that. So all these areas here would see tropical storm or hurricane uh, strength conditions as well. This is where the center could be, not where the whole storm is. It's really important to emphasize that when you look at these, don't focus on the line track or the individual track. So as it moves north, it will encounter really warm water and better environment, and then head towards the Eastern Gulf of Mexico or Florida. But again, remember, it could be as far west as here or as far east as here. So there's a pretty big uncertainty and normally, we have a pretty good idea of it being in here. But in this case, because of the uncertainty being wider than average, you gotta take into more uh, scenarios. It's not like Fiona, once the hurricane hunters got out there, we had a really consistent track with the guidance. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna show you this, all the spaghetti plots coming in tonight, um, just to show you what they look like. If I plot here, hopefully they'll plot. Maybe they're just coming in and they're not plotting. So, oh, okay, well, that's great. Um, so our data is not plotting currently, so I can't show you those, but I can show you a backup site. Um, we'll go to a different location here. So hopefully this will actually display them a little bit better. So these should be the latest uh, numbers coming in. There they are. And something that you've noticed tonight's guidance, and um, you could see there's been a little bit of a shift back to the west a little bit. This is the official forecast track, but all the guidance is starting to come back in to the Eastern Gulf. So this track here, is actually more of a problematic track for the Carolinas than it pushes east. But let me show you the ensembles. I think ensembles are important to look at as well. One of my favorite charts here is the super ensembles. And I'm gonna show you that real quickly. And again, this was the morning run of the ensembles. It kind of shows you not just a single model run, but all the variations. And then there's the mean of the ensembles plotted here. So we'll go all the way into next weekend and I'm gonna stop it Saturday morning. So if you look at this real quickly, you could see the uh, the envelope here is pretty big. That's pretty wide. You that's That basically is the guidance or the numerical data telling you there's a lot of uncertainty all the way from the Central Gulf to the Carolinas. But you see the means are kind of here in the Eastern Gulf towards the Florida region. So let's go back to the map and I'm gonna show you um, kind of what I'm thinking in areas that we're gonna to have to pay attention to going into next week. Uh, there's a couple scenarios to keep an eye on as, as this moves north. As the system gets past Cuba, it's either going to be in the eastern Gulf of Mexico or the southern Gulf of Mexico. There's going to be three scenarios that are going to pop up for us. Um, if you look at these scenarios, they got one red, one yellow, one green. Why are they shaded that color? Well, 
because based on where you are, the impacts could be pretty dramatic. The a west track in this case, the, the one in the red, would be the worst case scenario, obviously for the Panhandle of Florida, but also most of these inland areas from Georgia, South Carolina into the Western Carolinas, because that means flooding tornadoes and high wind impacts. The yellow, this would be a really bad track for the coast because this would be storm surge, wind, and a lot of rain. But remember, it's still got a crossover Florida. Anything that goes over land is gonna weaken it some. So even though we could see impacts up here, the fact that it's gonna be traveling over land isn't going to be like one of those hurricanes slamming into the coast like a Florence, a Matthew, a Hugo. It's going to be coming from the southwest. So at least it'll be somewhat weaker. Still an impact, but much weaker. Now, the best case scenario, not great for Florida, is the green one. So Florida, this is why you have to be on guard. This one going out to sea like this, that's still a possibility. That would mean all these areas would be okay. But that's kind of the scenarios we're looking at. So the way to kind of treat this this weekend, because we have time to watch this, is my good old ready, set, go graphic. So, you know, in parts of Cuba and Jamaica, you probably need to be set. You need to be, you know, making some preparations for a tropical storm or a minimal hurricane. But all the areas in green here in the southeast, you should be in the ready phase. Um, we're in that five to seven, if not longer time frame, where you should have your hurricane kit ready, you should have a plan, and you should be paying close attention to the forecast. The reason I put this graphic out here is that your guard needs to be up. You don't need to be freaking out, but you need to be ready. If you get into the set, then you start worrying a little bit more. And if you get to go, that's one heck, get out of Dodge, get to shelter. You've got some impacts more imminent. And I think this is the way to kind of approach this. Um, we can't discount this and we can't discount impacts up here because this could still do one of these. And obviously the one state that's completely green is Florida. So if you're in Florida, I mean, you're gonna have some type of impact. It's just a matter of intensity. Now what's steering this? What could make this thing be so uncertain to well if you look at the upper level pattern this is going to be the key to all of this uh, i'm going to stop it right here we've got a ridge of high pressure here ridge of high pressure here you know these spin clockwise that's pretty easy like this and then you got this big trough digging in well the problem is this is so far south is it close enough to grab it and pull it up it depends on how strong this is and how much latitude this can make over the weekend into early Monday. As we go into Monday, that window opens up for this to get picked up. But let's say this thing is not very strong. And I will tell you, I think it's gonna be stronger than we think because remember the remnants of Fiona are gonna get pulled back in here and kind of, I think, make this trough a little bit stronger. I think it's gonna help make that trough deeper and stronger. And I think it's gonna help pull this north. The problem is, does this happen here, here, or here. These windows are still open for this to move into the Gulf or even go east. You see it trying to connect. But if that trough leaves it behind, let's say that trough misses it, it could get hung up here and eventually kind of meander here and come up here. But eventually this ridge is going to build back in this direction and it's going to really shut off anything going into Texas. So I don't think that's really an opportunity. That's why I think late this thing's probably going to get picked up eventually and push off to the northeast. It's just a matter of how close it is to the coast. And by the way, this is the Europeans version of this. So folks, we've got time to watch this. This was the 5 p.m. advisory um, with the 8 p.m. coordinate update. We'll have another one coming up at 11 o'clock. Of course, I'll post it and I will post updates throughout the weekend. It's not a time to freak out. It's a time to be prepared. People that freak out or worried or you know get concerned, I want you to get a plan together, which you should have been doing since the beginning of hurricane season, but it was so quiet, we kind of left it off to the yard. So just have a plan. If you have a plan, there is nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about if you have a plan. What you need to worry about is not having a plan. So have a plan together in the Southeast. We'll get through this. We'll track it. We'll have updates throughout the weekend. The good news is we've got time over the weekend into early next week, and then we'll really have a good idea as the hurricane hunters get out there and we can give you some more concrete information and kind of whittle down the area of concern to a smaller and smaller window. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the beautiful weather in the Carolinas. I'll keep an eye on this and have updates throughout the weekend.